problem. No, no, no. It's big. It's big. Depends uh, on um, the volume. Yeah, yeah, but I didn't like that at all. That that would that's be a, a negative. A that's real, a deal breaker that's for the me. Big I'm going to complain to Dale, and Dale's going to go and call them up and say, hey, this thing is going. It's not detailed enough with my liking. I think it's like recessed a bit. I like the 390 better. I'm going to fire these people. <laughs> these guys are amateurs. Seriously, they, I think the Hegel might be better for... Uh, hi everyone, Adrian from Audio Excellence Canada. Uh, we're today we're going. Oh, Philip on my right, and Lewis uh, is joining us today. Um, we're going to be talking about a new, uh, two new products that uh, Peachtree introduced recently. It's the what's it called? Um, the Peachtree Pre DAC, which is the preamp and a DAC, and the Ganfet 400 power amplifier. So let me give you some specifics. The uh, Peachtree Pre DAC is um, a, a preamp and amplifier, a preamp and DAC section, I should say, uh, from the Nova 500 integrated amp. Uh, they say that it's upgraded, but I couldn't figure out or read where the supposedly the, the phono stage and the DAC are better than what was previous. Nova 500. Yeah. Okay, and uh, let's see. The Pre DAC has a USB B, USB A, coax digital, two opticals. Two analog inputs which are configurable, including MM capability. So if you got phono stage and you got the uh, MM cartridge, you can use that. It has a home theater bypass and a loop, so you can insert an EQ or room correction system. The amplifier, the GAN 400, is rated at 400 watts into either 4 ohms or 8 ohms, and that's pretty much all that matters. Okay, um, in Canada, the combination is 7,000 Canadian. Right now, on the on Petrie's website, if you buy both, I think it's forty five hundred US. Wow. Yeah. So we should check with uh, our rep to see why if there's a special. Why hasn't in Dale, Dale, you're out there. You should tell us this thing. If there's a special in Canada, I anyway, think there is. the two yeah. are seven thousand Canadian. Now, I thought it'd be interesting. Well, actually, I think Philip suggested uh, as context. Why don't we compare it with the King in that price range, which is the Hegel H three ninety. So um, that's what we're going to do. So for, for context, we compared the Peachtree compa uh, combination with the Hegel H390, which is an integrated amplifier with a DAC built in. And we connected it to the Magnapan 3.7i uh, speakers, which we just did a video on, and I believe that will drop first. So the guys will include the link to that video if you want to watch that. Uh, OK, um, away you go. Who wants to start? Develop. Okay, Philip. Well, he yes. started the last time. Uh, <laughs> so I must have gone on and on and on and on and on. Two hours later. On and on and on and on and on, on. Bugging Adrian about, hey, maybe we should try this thing. Maybe we should try this thing. I did eventually call uh, Dale, our um, peach tree agent, I don't know what a sales rep or whatever, and he said, oh, I hadn't ordered it yet. So I bugged him for quite a bit. And eventually he said, okay, I got, I'm getting this thing in. Um, and I said, well, I, I said immediately, can we try it? And so he brought it in when, when it did show up. And it's been in our store two weeks or something like that. Uh, we burned it in very extensively. The amplifier sounded pretty good right away. And then the preamp took maybe a little bit longer to break in. And once it broke in, it was totally appropriate for that kind of price range. That's the kind of what the sound that you would expect from something, you know, uh, that's a bit more than mid five pricing. I loved it. <laughs> the GAN 400 uses a technology that is essentially a super duper version of uh, Class D. Yeah, the, um, the regular Class D uses MOSFET. The right. GAN FET is a different um, type of transistor which turns on and off quicker than a MOSFET. Something so, like four times as quickly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's much faster and um, it makes it more efficient as well. So, uh, so the first thing you'll notice with this amplifier is that the GAN 400 just has a very natural, non-class D sound. It's, it sound. it's extremely quick, but it doesn't sound extremely quick. In other words, it sounds, it has a kind of naturalness. I, I know I've used that word a couple times now in other reviews, but there's a naturalness to it that there's no glariness. There's no, there's nothing hard about it. There's, there's nothing kind of like analytical. There's nothing that is 
anything like what you expect from a typical class D amplifier. There's, there's, there isn't that level of, of heightened excitement that some class D amps can have, because you know they can be a little bit insistent. And this, this, this amplifier, it sounds uh, relaxed and, 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 and a little bit laid back, and um, it scales instantly. So if you have something that's super dynamic, you'll hear it. So it has that ability to portray uh, layering, and it has ability to portray uh, lots of different frequencies all at the same time, which is not an easy thing to do. It does not sound held back by any kind of comp complexity in your music. You will hear all of the complexity in the music up to a certain degree, obviously. Like it, it, it's never going to beat something that's twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, but within its price range, it is extremely capable. Um, so in essence, you didn't like it. I did like it, <laughs> but there, of course, is a caveat. Obviously, we hooked the we hooked up the Magnapan 3.7i. That's not an easy speaker to drive. It's very, very, very demanding. It's extremely revealing of any kind of weakness in the electronics in front of it. I think what happens with this amplifier is that, as of all good amplifiers, it elevates the level of equipment. It was actually more capable than the speakers we had it hooked up to originally. So the speaker was, we were able to extract as much sound as possible out of that speaker. When we used it with the 3.7, you did begin to notice that perhaps it wasn't quite a perfect match. I had LRSs on, on the GAN 400 as well, and that was very, very good. It was warm, natural, big sound. So the amplifier itself sounds like it doesn't sound transistory it has this kind of uh fullness to it that is quite surprising a lot of good mid bass which you don't expect from class d type amplifiers so when i had it on the 3.7 uh I, I i usually like to play it fairly loud and i couldn't quite get there it didn't quite have enough control in the bottom end it had it had lots of warmth but it didn't have, it started to break up a little bit. So I actually had to turn it back down. And that's how I discovered that perhaps 3.7s or any Maggie's, when driven to the right volume, you don't really need to go beyond that because if the scale is correct and the imaging is correct and the size of the head of the singer is the right size, that's, that's the volume you should be using. And certainly with the Peachtree com combo, uh, when I got, when I, when I turned it back a bit, it was correct. Now, in comparison to the H390, I like the 390 better. But the 390, we know, is it has the strengths built into that that the Peachtree combo still doesn't have. So the 390 has very high damping, which is a big, 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 big bonus when it comes to something like the Magnapan. And it has slightly blacker backgrounds because of the noise cancellation that's built into the output stage because it has a, a feed forward type uh, design that's designed to reduce the noise and have very black um, backgrounds the noise floor gets dropped um, put, you know it just sounds more a little bit more pristine way more controlled especially in the bottom end and uh, but in other, almost every other area it was the GAN, GAN 400 and the pre-DAC was the equal of the, the 390. The 390 is a little bit better in, in, in that it has better bass control. That's essentially the difference that I noticed. Uh, what did you hear, Lewis? I I actually prefer the GAN. I find I like a detail, and I think the amplifier is more detailed than the 390, the Hegel 390. Mm -hmm. So my pick would be for the... Um, for the peach tree, um, I find Hegel. I mean, it's very good, but it's not detailed enough with my liking. I think it's like recessed a bit, and the Gan was. I I thought it was excellent with the Maggie's. I we didn't push it to any extreme loudness. So I just found so. that when you turned it up beyond a certain point, it the there was a degradation in the sound quality. Okay, the musicality so, reduced. Um, yeah, it wasn't well, enjoy, as enjoyable. When I turned it back down to a more appropriate area, mm -hmm. uh, it kind of locked in. So it was much nicer. And I usually never turn it down. 
and I found it perfectly acceptable to turn it down. I could hear everything then at, at that at that volume. I'm pretty sure we weren't pushing it that hard, but I'm just saying as I was reacting to the speaker, there was a range where it was like just right. It was kind of locked in. Yeah, yeah I, I, well, <clears throat> I played at, at the volume at, at similar levels, so, but I don't think we were, I was pushing it to a 90 dB level or something that, you know, I don't listen to that load. One thing I can say, I have the NAD at home, the pre and power, and I think the peach tree sounds better than my NAD at home. You have a M27, right? I, no, I have the M22 and oh. the M12, the pre and the there power. And I, I definitely the peach tree will give it a good run for the money. Okay. And my combo is more expensive than that combo. Mm. So I would definitely recommend, without a doubt, the GAN. Okay, hey, my turn. Your turn. So as, as Philip likes to do, I'm going to tell a story. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to call the story A Troubled Soul. Uh-oh. <laughs> so just so you guys know, <coughs> we never discuss before the video um, so that each one of us can say what we think fresh, without edits, without coercion, and so on. Um, I first listened to the system using the Hegel because that was something that I'm very familiar with, and uh, why not? I know the Hegel very well. It's been here for, what, two, three years so we sell tonnage of those. So, um, and uh, listen to the system for a good three or four hours, uh, partly because it was also to do the video on the uh, MagnaPan 3.7 speakers. I was really enjoying it, and then I thought, oh shoot, let me switch over to the uh, um, to the peach tree. So um, before I did switch, I made sure to calibrate the volume levels so that uh, both would be playing, both uh, uh, electronic systems would be playing at the same reference level so it wouldn't be influenced by um, volume differences. So then I switched over to the peach tree at the same volume. Um, um, the first thing I, I, I first thing I found out was, boy, this thing is dense and frenetic. It's like it's mm. constantly... You know, so the moment that happened, I immediately started to think, I got to play some dance music. Mm. So I did. I put on Earth, Wind, and Fire, you know, uh, uh, um, a fantasy. I played, uh, I'll give you a couple of cuts uh, Yellow, La Habanera. It's like, oh my God, this is wonderful. Um, so then I thought, okay, let me try something else because I, I had already played a huge list of music with the Hegel. So I started to switch over to other sorts of music. And that's when I started discovering things I wasn't as crazy about. Um, first of all, uh, which uh, um, Lewis had mentioned um, to me and before I stopped him and said, don't say anything else. It might be the system, it might be the, uh, the, the peach tree samples that we have, but if you s start a, a song, a stream, it pops. And you stop it, it's okay, and you start another one, it pops again. Drove me crazy. Uh, I, I did all kinds of things trying to, to mitigate it, didn't do a thing. It just popped. So it, that's one thing you need to be aware of. Again, I say can be our samples. I don't know. Um, when I played um, less complex music, something more relaxed, it still had the sense that it wanted to push the music along. It was like, okay, come on, let's wake up here. Perhaps the main issue, um, well, let, let, let me tell the story reason I called it a troubled soul as I was listening to a variety of different music and then I started to play others which I'll allude to in a second um, somehow my late brother younger brother Ian popped into my mind uh, Ian uh, Villet knew him mm -hmm. uh, uh, if you knew Ian you would your, your impressions of him would be boy this guy is so nice he's so engaging he loves to laugh he's very a, a huge people person if you go to a party with him um, I would be the one sitting in the corner quietly watching and and he would be the one in the middle chugging down uh, all, all the shots and, and, and having you drink off his belly and all this stuff. That's him. That's Ian, right? Um, everybody loved Ian. I swear to you. Uh, um, girls naturally flocked to him. It didn't, help, didn't hurt that he was like six foot one or six foot two. I mean, I'm the short guy in the family. This guy is tall, slim, really good looking, like amazing, right? But there was a dark side. He had this issue with self-confidence. 
um, I remember when he started to work with me, started to make a lot of money. He says, Adrian, I'm thinking about buying the BMW M3, the new one that just come out. I said, good for you, go for it. He says, ah, but I don't think I, I should do it. I said, why? He says, people like me don't deserve to drive BMWs. And I thought, what do you mean? He says, well, you know, I'm not those hoity-toity kind of guys. So that gave you a bit of an idea, gives you a bit of an idea of, of his level of uh, self-esteem. Uh, he fought that for all of his life. Um, he, because of his level of, of, of difficulty with himself, he had to uh, resort to drugs and drinks to make himself feel better and live up to the uh, impression that people had of him. And unfortunately, that also became uh, uh, an issue eventually uh, when, when a relationship of his uh, went under. And I remember uh, during one of his dark days sitting with him and we were listening to some music. And, and so now we get to the point. Um, we both loved a lot of the same kind of music. He introduced me to some dance music. I introduced him to some uh, classical and so on. And, and, and there were two artists that we both love. James Ingram, um, uh, his debut album with Quincy Jones, I think it was his debut album, and the song was um, There's No Easy Way. A beautiful, very evocative piece of music um, about breaking up a relationship. And of course, that was the absolute wrong song to play when he was going through it. But the time that we played it, he couldn't stop crying. I just, the wrong song, as I say. The, the, through the peach tree, despite the fact that I found it a bit frenetic, the emotionally engaging part of it came through. Uh, so that's what I mean about troubled soul. It's not all uh, uh, sunshine and roses and so on. There's, there's a part of me that, that, that says, I don't want it to always be so frenetic. But despite that, that involvement in music is incredible. Um, uh, the other cut that I wanted to talk about was Luther Vandross. When he got into his last relationship, he was so happy. He was bouncing off the walls, and I'm sure part of it was drug-induced, but he was, Adrian, you got to come over and, and, mm. and meet her, and I did. And it was, you know, lovely to meet his girlfriend, and, and uh, he was starting to think about the songs he wanted to play for his wedding. It had just been with her for like a, a week. And we both listened to uh, um, uh, um, Luther Vandross here and now. And I said, well, what about this song? It's, it's a perennial favorite of mine. And it's a gorgeous piece of music, Luther at his best. Um, and again, there's this sense of energy in this piece of music that normally with the Hegel is a bit more relaxed. But there's no denying that musically, emotionally it connected very very strongly with me and it, it made my heart thump when I listened to it through the um, peach tree that I didn't quite get with the Hegel. So all of that is to say my conclusion I don't have a, a, a straight cut answer as to between the Hegel and the peach tree which one I prefer. I think on balance overall for the kinds of music that I play throughout um, a month, let's say, I think the Hegel might be better for me, but um, I am uh, incredibly impressed by the peach tree overall, except for that one pop thing. That we have to figure out what that, well, what that is. Well, uh, undoubtedly they will introduce firmware upgrades that will solve Oh, you that heard issue. that as well? Well, I'm gonna complain to Dale, and Dale's gonna go and call them up and say, hey, this thing's going on, fix it. I wonder and if it's, as I say, just our sample. Because it could be our sample, I'm but, not aware of but anybody else the unit it. is firmware upgradable. Uh, you can download stuff whenever new stuff arrives. You go to the website, you download the file into a, a USB flash drive, you stick it in the back, you start it up, and it'll update. Um, so I'm 100% I'm sure that they will fix that once they're aware of it, and they're probably aware of it. So. Uh, I'm not concerned about that at all. It is annoying. It's truly annoying to have a pop at the beginning. Well, if of you've got song. a personality like me, all you focus on is the negative. <laughs> so, so I walk into a room, and if if a painting is hung slightly askew, it'll drive me nuts. Mm -hmm. You know, like uh, anyway. So th we don't. It wasn't enough to, to make me not enjoy it. That's that's all I will say about it, right? If fixed, would you recommend it? Well, let's go to let's go to the the pros and cons now before we go to the final conclusion. So pros and cons, who started? You started. So 
Pros and cons. Well, they're they're beautiful. Well, let's go with the cons. You already talked about the pros. Let's go with the cons. Well, the con is that um, uh, it's still two pieces. Uh, ultimately, I only wanted to really try the 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 the, uh, the amplifier, but of course, we got the preamp as well, and it took me a while to figure that out. So, two pieces is generally not as good as one piece in terms of just having a basic setup. So, level anytime you increase complexity in a system, it's generally speaking not quite as good. It's more difficult to achieve the same level of musicality and whatnot. The unit, the, 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 the GAN 400 does get a little bit hot from what I, what, I, what I experienced. That was a surprise to me considering that it's supposed to be a very efficient design. I don't have much experience obviously with that kind of topology with that new GAN FET. Um, I can't really think of too much more. Amateurs. I, Go ahead. I know. Well, well, well I'm, I mean, I'm a very positive person. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> um, the negative is um, definitely it gets warm because I put my hand over it and I was shocked um, for a class D getting this warm. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know whether that's really a negative as such because... Well, you can't class... stack them. If you stack them, you won't put the amp on top. Okay. But um, I don't think it's any different from a, a class A, B or a class a so i wouldn't really say that's a negative i don't know you have more experience well a con me. is just anything that you know you think that it may be a, a like yeah. you might not i have. personally don't like the rounded edges i prefer the box <laughs> the shoe box style I'm, but um maybe it's something what i could grow with but um to me the sound is excellent so I don't think I Focus would have Focus on con. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna fire these people. These guys are amateurs, seriously. What else? I only have I, nice things to say. No other cons? Really? No. You're no. struggling five minutes. Okay, let me lay it in. Oh, <coughs> uh -oh. excuse oh, me. All right. All right. <laughs> I don't have a lot either. <laughs> okay. Uh, the guys mentioned the heat. Um, operationally, I don't like the volume control. It feels stiff, a little bit almost rough. I, I like silky things. This felt a little bit stiff. Uh, for, for those of you who are wondering, you know, as a reference, what's a really good volume control? If you ever, ever get to uh, enjoy the, the a cello volume control, I feel it. A nagger, something really that, what that that's name, the... uh, not bad, but you got to feel those. And you go it's like silky, but with a slight touch of resistance. That's beautiful. Uh, uh, a Penny and Giles volume control. Ooh, check me out. Okay, um, uh, I don't like that. The remote control, plasticky. At this level, I expect metal. Oh. I expect metal. Um, the uh, um, oh, and the volume control. After you've adjusted the volume, uh, as you adjust the volume, you can see the lights indicator go up, and then after about a second or so, they disappear. I don't like that, which means I don't really know at any at any given point. There's no visual uh, feedback to me as to where the volume setting actually is. I'd like to see something that's maybe it's in the manual. Maybe you can actually adjust it. We, we have to look into that. But I'd like to see a visual indicator of where the volume is set. Um, I mentioned I I I found it a little bit insistent. Not a big enough thing. It's not a deal breaker, but uh, I I would prefer it to be a little bit more chameleon like. Where am I coming up with these words? A little bit chameleon like so, so that when the music is more relaxed, I prefer it to be relaxed. When it's insistent, I want to dance. So, so I would prefer it a bit mm. that way. Um, other than that, uh, and the big one until they resolve it, that mm. that big pop, the moment the piece it's of music slips. A little pop. No, no, no. It's big. It's big. Uh, Depends um, on the volume. Yeah, yeah, but I didn't like that at all. That that that's would be a, a negative. A that's real, a deal breaker that's for the me. Big if negative. they can't fix it, if it's in every unit that's the shipping right now, that's a deal breaker for me. I, I would not recommend that. But if they can fix it, good. All right. So recommendations. You guys like it? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Two thumbs up. Well, qualified. You know, one way or the other. I, w I will say one other thing. Yeah. Now, I know you found it insistent, yeah. and I did not find it that way. Yeah. And I was listening to, so I have, a new, I have a new play playlist that I, I, that I asked Alex to transfer the title for me. So, so, someone published an article about songs that give you chills, mm. what they call frisson, mm. which is like 
there's a physiological reaction and you feel like the hair on the back of your neck, they will stand on end. So I was playing all these tracks from that specifically to listen to this amplifier and it was doing it. Like I, I was totally surprised that I'm listening to these songs and I'm reacting to it. Like I normally react to my, 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 my you know, the, 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 the my, my baseline tracks that I, I really like for this effect. And here I found this playlist and all these songs are doing this to me. I'm going like, so that amp is actually portraying the emotion in a nice kind of like um, exciting way. So maybe that's part of the insistence. Well, like I said, I like the emotional part of it. Yeah. Okay, we got to go. It's two minutes later. And but we that's, have to, that's, that's and we have to open the thing. store. Yeah. All right, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please uh, thumbs up, subscribe, share the video. You know the drill. Adrian from Audio Excellence, Philip and Lewis, and then the Angus Squid. Uh, sorry, Angus Squid. <laughs> Alex Squid behind the controls. Thanks very, very much. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. All right. Hi everyone, Adrian from Audio Excellence Canada. Um, Lou is my friend. Uh, Philip's on the phone and he'll be on the phone for a while, so I thought uh, we'd update you about the Peachtree Combo video. Um, so first of all, the fatal flaw, which I said I could not deal with, I could not recommend it if uh, this was not addressed. Uh, watch the video, you'll see it. Um, apparently it's been addressed. Uh, we were told by the agent that if you downloaded a specific format, uh, uh, Philip, come join us real quick. Um, we're doing the update about the uh, peach tree patch. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So, so according to Dale, our erstwhile agent, if you do the patch, it basically gets rid of the uh, big pop right at the beginning of a song when you first play right. it. Yeah. And Philip did the update, and uh, for all intents and purposes, it works as long as you basically stay with uh, the same format, so 44.1. Yeah, if you switch to a, a higher resolution format, it, it might. Once in a while, it does yeah, pop, but it doesn't always can. pop. So we're going to... The pop is a lot less. Yeah, so we're going to dig a little bit deeper in it, but suffice to say, the fact that uh, we primarily play Tidal through it and the problem has primarily been resolved, I'm okay now with recommending it. And again, we'll look into the details of maybe getting rid of it entirely, if that's possible, a little bit later. But so for now, highly recommend it. But as an addendum... What's the addendum? We originally thought that the pricing of the combo was about $7,000, oh, right? It's, In fact, it's $7,056 Canadian, $3,207 for the preamp DAC, and $3,849 for the GAN 400 amplifier. Turns out, for the month of June in Canada, I don't know about the U.S., I certainly don't know about the rest of the world. Oh, For the month of June, the price of the condo, uh, condo, Con combo, combo is $4,548. bucks. That's a savings of $2,508. Now, we, we verified this three times, so Dale says for sure that's the price. That's below our cost, really. And I just texted the guy just to confirm again. This is insane. Um, if you guys are at all interested in a combo that's really good, and the truth is, really? it's really good. My big concern, you know, that gave it a fail as far as I was concerned was that pop. Well, the pop has been essentially ameliorated. At this price, 4548 bucks just for the month of June, absolute steal, right? Absolutely. So if you're interested in a set, uh, give us a call or email us. Uh, you can also go on our website. Uh, AudioExcellence.ca. Click on the uh, online store. You can you can order it online. Uh, we'll be getting uh, our orders in very very sh uh, shortly. So please let us know if you want to set. But basically, incredible buy. If you're this on the price, fence, just come down to the store, have a listen. Five minutes into it, I'm sure you'll be convinced. Yeah, at this price is an absolute no brainer. I don't know of a better combo Nothing. for this for this pricing, but only for the month of June. After that, it goes back up to normal prices of seven thousand and fifty six dollars Canadian. All right. So anyway, uh, Alex will edit this, uh, update it very very quickly, and uh, thanks for watching this. We'll see you next time. Bye. Two thumbs up.